This is the Alpha Human Podcast, and I am your host, Lawrence Rosenberg. Our guests today are Joe Tetai and Dale Comstock. Now, Dale, who's been on the podcast before, is an ex Green Beret and Delta Force operator who has been featured on the NBC TV series Stars Earn Stripes and Discovery Channel's One Man Army. And he is also the author of the book. American Badass, the true story of a modern day Spartan. Now, Joe Tetai is an ex force recon Marine, and he's also a former Army Special Forces, AKA Green Beret, and a graduate of numerous special operations schools. Joe was also the co star of the hit Discovery Channel series, Dual Survivor, and he is the author of the book. Lone Operator, How to Survive and Thrive in the Modern Age. Together, Dale and Joe run Tier 1 Performance Coaching, where they offer mentorship to help kids, adults, and business owners realize their full potential and enhance or accelerate their performance. Joe and Dale, who's about to arrive shortly, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it very much. Dill uh, speaks very highly of you. Oh, well, uh, he's, uh, he's an incredible individual. And, uh, you know, he's told me a bunch of great things about you. And so I was really looking forward, uh, Joe, to having you on as well and really getting into it with you, especially around uh, the coaching aspect of what you guys do, but certainly want to learn a little bit about your background. So why don't we use this time while we're waiting for Dale to kind of get into who you are and what your story is, uh, because it's a really, really, uh, in, you've, got a, you've got a real interesting background. I've read a lot of your book, Lone Operator, fantastic story. So, you, And it's not just a story about your life and what you've done. It, it also gives a lot of advice as well, life lessons in there. But why don't you take us through a little bit about your background, where you come from, what you've done, and uh, what you're doing. Yes, sir. Um, so I, uh, Nickel Tour, I was born and raised in a very small uh, steel mining town about an hour outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and uh, grew up, you know, uh, like I mentioned my book, in not the wealthiest uh, atmosphere. Um, grew up in the projects, and uh, sometimes we had electricity, sometimes we didn't. Um, you know, I... Um, my parents, uh, they divorced when I was seven. And then, you know, I, I lived between both, you know, my mother and father's place. And then uh, sadly, my mother uh, died. She was killed in a car accident when I was in high school. And, you know, a lot of people, they see me now and they think I was some kind of athlete in high school. And the fact of the matter was um, <laughs> when I left from Marine Corps boot camp 10 days after I graduated, uh, I was in Paris Island and I weighed in at 99 pounds straight Jeez. up. I didn't play any sports in high school. I was bullied. Uh, it, you know, it was, it was pretty bad. I was a train wreck and I, and self admittedly, you know, and that's okay. And I talk about it in my book. Mm -hmm. So I went to Marine Corps right out of high school, uh, went to Paris Island boot camp, And then, uh, I went straight to infantry training school, uh, at Camp Geiger. And I was actually the honor graduate. And while, um, while I was there, actually graduation day, a recruiting team from the Second Force Reconnaissance Company, which at that time, now this is 1982, all right? Okay. There was only one Force Reconnaissance Company in the entire Marine Corps, okay? Um, they had a um, recruiting team come out and they picked up, uh, I think about 15 of us, the guys that volunteered to uh, try out for the company. Mm -hmm. And so I went through RIP, Recon and Doctorization Program, and then the timing was really crappy. Um, I was waiting for my ARS class to kick up. And um, unfortunately, that took about three months. So I went through three months of RIP and then my ARS class started in October. So I went through a winter class, which really was a kick, you know, where. Uh, and at that time, Amphib Recon School was in Fort Story, Virginia. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're swimming in the Chesapeake Bay in the winter you know, the water's 53, 54 degrees, cold, real cold, Jeez. you know. So um, anyway, spent four years in the Marines, kind of was disenchanted because they were kind of like the bastard children. You know, the Marine Corps didn't know how to handle a, a spec ops unit. And at that time, there was no MARSOC. 
the Force right. Recon was not part of SOCOM. So we didn't get any good gear. You know, all of our parachutes were used. All of our dive gear was used. We didn't get any missions, but you had this great asset and, you know, stud guys. I've said it before, the most physically fit guys I've ever met ever were in Force Recon. I mean, crazy, right. crazy in shape. So anyway, got out, had a break in service for about five years, moved to Vegas, uh, went to UNLV and got my Series 7 and 63 broker's exam uh, licenses. And I was a stockbroker for five years with Bear Stearns. Wow. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I was mildly successful, but I was the proverbial, you know, round peg in a square hole. Okay. It just, it, it just wasn't me. And, and still in the back of my head, I had that, I want to be that commando guy. So okay. I went back in, went through special forces selection, went to the Q course, Halo school, all these other schools. And then right before I was getting ready to ETS, um, I was contacted um, uh, by a, a government uh, counterterrorist unit. Um, I, I'm not going to get in a lot of details about it, but anyway, uh, they were basically at the top of the food chain. Their primary recruiting ground is from the tier one units from Delta and still team six. That's mm -hmm. where they take their majority of their guys from. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, I was given the opportunity and the privilege of trying out for that unit. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't have the proper clearance. I had a secret clearance, um, but I didn't have a TS, a top secret SCI, which is the highest clearance you can get. And you had to pass a very in-depth polygraph. Okay. And statistically, 50% of the guys that take the polygraph don't even pass. Okay. So now, you know, you've got, you know, I think we started with, um, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, we had 36 guys, because I asked, that they were looking at. And then um, that number boiled down to a small, smaller number. And then you go through a six-month operator training course. And I graduated with four guys. There was four guys in my class. From how many? How many? Uh... Well, it, we had 36. And okay. these are all former guys, you know, Delta, SEAL Team 6 guys, Special Forces, okay. Marstock, with at least 10 years experience. So, you know, you've got you've got this basketball team with a bunch of Michael Jordans, you know? Right. So I was, uh, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I had a really big chip on my shoulder because I was around all these, you know, thoroughbred racehorse guys in the spec ops community. Even mm -hmm. though I came from that community, you know, I was around these Delta guys, former Delta guys, former SEAL Team 6 guys, and, you know, that had all this experience that, you know, uh, but I learned a lot from them. So I really pushed the bar when it came to physical fitness there and my shooting capability because I had these, you know, all these, you know, rock stars around me. Okay. So my, my capability as a, a, a special operations guy, it just blossomed. And it was because I was around these guys. You know, you can't help but get better when you're around guys that are better than you. And so that just takes your, you know, keeps doing that thing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I was in that unit for quite some time. I deployed to Afghanistan, Iraq, um, other places and uh, doing um, <laughs> doing missions that I never thought I'd be doing, to be quite honest with you. Okay. Um, they uh, they have a very interesting mission set. Um, and again, I'm not going to get into the details of that unit, but you know, one thing I will tell you just to kind of give you, put it in perspective. Okay. When, when guys are in Delta and SEAL team six, obviously their identities are closely guarded, but when they get out, you know, guys write books. I was in Delta, I was in SEAL team six, but the unit I was in, you're basically sworn to secrecy for life. Okay. I can never divulge who I work for and I never will. And I never have. Um, and, and I'm morally and ethically, uh, and legally bound not to, um, but it was, I'll be honest with you, it was the biggest honor of my life. And that's where I met Dale. Uh, Dale came from Delta and, um, he was in the unit that I was in. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Gotcha. So Dale and I, we met and we had, a, you know, we just clicked, you know, um, deployed with him, went to, you know, went to a school with him. Uh, so I got to know him really well, and I, I really admired the guy, and I still do. He's an amazing man. Um, his resume, it makes me look like an amateur, you know. So, but I love being around guys like that because it only makes you better. And for people that are listening, don't let, you know, no matter what your chosen profession is, 
if you can surround yourself with rock stars, mm -hmm. don't let that intimidate you. You're only going to get better, you know, and that's, and that's the kind of people I like to be around, you know? So, so I did that for a while. And then <laughs> the strangest thing, you know, I went from completely black or if you would have taken a picture of me, I would have confiscated your camera to being <laughs> on a, you know, international TV show. Right. <laughs> Talk about a dichotomy. Yes, sir. So, um, and that's, you know, that's a whole nother story we can get into, but, you know, I got on dual survival, did that for three years, traveled all over the world, um, surviving in some of the harshest environments in the world from the Arabian desert in Oman. And then the next, you know, the next time we're in on a glacier in Norway, and then they fly us to the jungle in Sri Lanka. So it was brutal, mm. brutal, brutal show to shoot. Yeah, it was, it was an incredibly popular show. Yes. And, and I'll be honest with you, you know, I, uh, the last two seasons that I was on, I was on the show with a gentleman by the name of uh, Matt Graham. Uh -huh. And uh, Matt is an amazing survival guy. You know, he's that, he's a survival guy that can rub his sticks together and, you know, basically rub two dead squirrels together and make a fire. He's that good. <laughs> but they didn't bring me on the show to be that guy. They brought okay. me on the show to show another aspect of survival. You know, the, the spec ops, version okay because if you had, had two guys like me it would have been boring but you had a guy like matt and a guy like me and it was you know yin and yang kind of thing and it worked great and matt was a stud an amazing athlete can run and swim and climb and that actually was played into the show on a lot if you ever watched the show we got to do some really dicey stuff we actually swam through a uh, underwater cave one time not mm. on oxygen or anything it was a free dive and um that was, that was dicey. That was dicey, but Matt pulled it off and I pulled it off. But anyway, it was, it was fun for a while. And then I, I did that. And then, um, you know, I made a little bit of money and invested my money, uh, made a little bit of money, lost a little money and, um, and, uh, invested in some businesses and did well. And then, Matt and, uh, Dale and I talked one day and he told me, he says, Hey man, I'm doing this coaching thing, you know, kind of like as a hobby. And it's, it's kind of taken on this new form. Mm -hmm. And he said, you'd be great at it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he, he told me. And so that was the incubus of uh, starting tier one performance coaching. And we uh, we're killing it. I mean, we've got um, we only coach 10 people at a time. That's it. OK, it's it's more about, you know, the quality than quantity. I mean, Dale's a businessman. He's got other business interests. I've got other business interests. So we've basically said, OK. 10 people at a time. Once somebody mm -hmm. drops off, we pick somebody else up. Gotcha. Um, and it's an eight week course. Um, and uh, you talk four weeks with Dale, four weeks with me, and it's done on Zoom like this. Okay. Uh, you get homework, but um, it's, a, it's an amazing program in, in many, many different ways. But, um, you know, we, uh, I, we, I can't give out names because people sign non disclosures and we, and, and we can't give out their names. But uh, I have coached a Formula One racer. Okay. Uh, and a Swedish uh, Olympian uh, gymnast. Okay. So we've had some pretty high end clients. We've had multi, multi millionaires. Uh, matter of fact, the one guy that Dell was coaching was a billionaire. Um, okay. And so uh, it's very diverse. We've had a fireman, we've had police officers, military guys, you know, a, a, a wide gamut of blue and white collar people. Um, but uh, the program is unlike any out there, to be quite honest with you. All right. So I want to get into some of that program. Um, I, I guess the first question I have is, look, you know, if you're looking for a performance coach, right, e everyone knows the big names, right? So you know, they know the Tony Robbins, right? Chris Gardner from uh, The Pursuit of Happiness, right? right? Who's also a former stockbroker, right? Um, you got uh, uh, Les Brown, right? right. All, all these great motivational people, these motivational coaches, um, very popular names. Now, most people can't afford those guys. So what they do is they come down a notch and they hire these, you know, these motivational life coaches. So you can either go to, you know, a life coach or on the other end of the spectrum, we've got two X Green Berets uh, that we can go to. And, and get some performance coaching. Now, what I'm curious about is, you know, 
uh, you know, from if you're from the corporate world, everyone's thinking, you know, the Tony Robbins track. Right. Guys right. like that. Those are the types of performance coaches you're going to go for. But I could see a lot of executives actually wanting something a bit more, uh, a bit more salt to the earth, you know, rough and tumble and real, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, bruise your knees, scrape your elbows and, and take on life, you know, by the scruff of the neck kind of coaching to to really accelerate their performance in the real world. Uh, not to say what they do is not in the real world, but right. you guys have been at the coal face and tip of the spear in a lot of dicey situations. So what I'd love to know is, uh, Joe, what makes you personally unique as a performance coach? Why should someone choose you versus the Tony Robbins style performance coach? A very good question, uh, Mr. Rosenberg, and, and you know nothing to take away from uh, Mr. Robbins or any of these other guys that are very successful mm -hmm. uh, individuals. They've been coaching for a long time, uh, but they are, like you said, they're life coaches. There is a difference between being a life coach mm -hmm. and a performance coach. Okay. Um, you know, Dale and I don't get into telling you how to run your marriage or how to do your business or anything. We are going to teach you how to perform better. And once you teach someone how to perform better, it kind of bleeds into all of their other aspects of their life, mm -hmm. your relationship, your family, your business, your fitness, it, it, it bleeds into it. Mm -hmm. So there is a difference. Um, but to answer your question, I think that the best answer is uh, we're not just teaching from, you know, I read this book and it's telling me to say this. Or I went to some school and I got a certi certification on being a life coach, a performance coach. Uh, like you said, Dale and I are from the school of hard knocks. Mm -hmm. um, we have done some amazing things with our lives. And we've had experiences, not only from a military standpoint or a government standpoint, but business. We've been in business. I've been a stockbroker. Dale's bought and sold businesses. He's, you know, he's, he owns a, a big security company in Bali right now. Mm -hmm. So we're not what I call a one trick pony. We're right. not, we're not like one dimensional, you know, we're not here. Hey, we're going to tell you how to be this, you know, bad to the bone spec ops guy and, you know, warrior mindset, warrior mindset. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to that warrior mindset. Um, but we, we bring a lot of tools to the table. One of the, um, one of the sayings that, that Dale and I use is, you know, when we talk to people, it's like, look, if you've got this little tactical toolbox, right, we, we talk about, we put all these gold nuggets in it, right? If you don't have these gold nuggets and, you know, the, all these tools and all you have is a hammer, the entire world looks like a nail. Right. Because that's all you got. Right. You need a screwdriver and a socket set and a Phillips set. We give you these gold nuggets that when you need to use a specific tool, you can use it. You're not just like, well, I got a hammer, Joe. I, I can hammer nails, but that's it. We give you these gold nuggets throughout the course and we give you a lot of them. And so that's a big difference. We are, we are teaching and coaching from a purely experienced background. As a matter of fact, um, Albert Einstein has a really cool quote and it's one of my favorites. Um, th 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 basically it says, the key to knowledge is experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we have it. We're not just reading a book. You know, like we're not a book smart uh, group of guys. Now, you know, granted, Dale's got a doctorate mm -hmm. in natural health. Um, he's a really smart guy. But we're dealing from real world experiences. And that, how do you place an intrinsic value on that? I'm I, when I coach people, I'm telling you, like, I've done this, this worked and this didn't work. And this is why. So I want to talk, you mentioned the warrior mindset. Okay. So I want to, I want to touch on that, Joe. So we all, we often talk about the warrior mindset, right? Like the, we look at it, like we envision the winner's psychology or the, the championship uh, mind frame, right? And we view it through the lens of those that are looking to be high achievers, uh, those that are striving to become the best at something. 
But you bring up a different aspect regarding the critical nature of developing a warrior's mindset for, and, and that's, and that's one that's relevant for every human being, whether you're competing for a lofty achievement or not. And that's the need to have a state of mind necessary to survive extraordinary circumstances. So I want to quote you from your book, Lone Operator. Uh, <clears throat> you say, the idea that you might face overwhelming long odds of survival without any protection is nearly unthinkable. It won't happen. You, wish, you reassure yourself, but it will. At some point in your life, at a moment's notice, you will find yourself engaged in a war whose outcome will certainly determine your fate and likely that of your loved ones. It could happen in a variety of ways. It could happen in the blink of an eye. Civilization as we know it is a thin veneer shielding us individually from the age old fight for dominance and food. I enjoy the idea of civilization as much as anyone, but I also recognize that the order we've built is fragile and it will fail. When stripped of civilization's good graces and protections, we quickly revert to our basic nature. We will scrap like any other animal for sustenance and like any other, the weak will die and the strongest among us will prevail. So the single most important tool you possess and the one that will decide your fate is mindset. Mindset outstrips them all in terms of importance. Now, I got to tell you, Joe, usually when I talk to people about the warrior mindset, right, because I speak to a lot of special operators, I always like to talk about mindset. What's that all about? What's that psychology about? But I haven't heard anyone frame it from a survival standpoint. So can you elaborate on this? Sure. So when people hear the warrior mindset, the very first thing they think of is military, 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 right. right? Going out, fighting, shooting bad guys, that kind of thing. When in fact, a warrior mindset has nothing to do with, in my opinion, being in the military. It's a state of mind that basically, uh, again, your brain is trainable, okay? This is something you have to train yourself to do it. And I've had to do it myself. It takes time, but basically, you train yourself to understand, just like what you said, world is going to deal bad hands to you from time to time. It's the nature of life. Okay. Uh, you pray for the, you know, you pray for the best and you train for the worst. Mm. The philosophy that, that Dale and I try to put out is it, it's, it's a very strange combination of discipline, commitment, understanding yourself, knowing your limitations and becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I know you've probably heard that term from other spec ops guys, mm -hmm. but I'll tell you what, there's a lot of truth in that. Okay. So um, having that warrior mentality is not just like, go, go, go fight, fight, fight. It's controlling your emotions under extreme stress, right? Maintaining your body at a high level of physical fitness, because let's face it, I, look, I know guys that can bench press 500 pounds, but if you put them out in the rain for an hour in the cold, they're done. They're done. <laughs> so it, it's kind of like, you know, how valuable is a sword, you know, compared to the hand that wields it? You understand? Right. Does that make sense? So it, people need to understand, it's like you can be physically tough, but you better be mentally tough. And if you're mentally tough, you better be physically tough. That coin flips both ways, just like a door. And so when, when Dale and I are teaching people uh, and coaching people, we explain to them how to do this. And here's a very, you know, here's a very simple, and I do it every day. And people that are listening might go, eh, big deal. It is a big deal. Okay, what I'm about to tell you. I, I work out pretty hard. I'm, I'm big into my fitness. I swim three days a week. Mm -hmm. um, but when I'm done, when I'm done with my swim, I take an ice cold shower. I don't take a hot shower. I take an ice, I mean cold and the water there and the winter in the gym is freezing. Mm. Why? Because it sucks. It sucks. That is a very small way for, for Joe to maintain 
a very strong mindset. Purposely turning on the cold water when I want to take a nice hot shower, right. I take a freezing cold shower. Little things like that, if you do it in your life, will make you mentally tough and it becomes a habit because you're becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And when you learn how to do that, you become a very dangerous person, very dangerous because now you're controlling your mind. And you talk to any spec ops guy, you talk to a SEAL or SF guy, Ranger, whatever, they're going to tell you the same thing because they've experienced it. That's why, uh, you know, units like that can accomplish the missions that they can, you know, it's just that simple. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. So um, let me ask you, there is this concept that uh, that is part of the tier one performance coaching curriculum, and it's called psychosoma engineering, right? Psycho. So I've never heard of this term in my life. Right. <laughs> so market, by the way, <laughs> you, you should, it's a great term. What, is psychosoma engineering. Right. So psycho and soma, mind, body. Um, and I learned this basically from Dale. Okay. Um, I knew what I was doing when I was training, but I didn't understand the mechanics of it. You understand? Okay. It's, like, it's like starting your car. I know it's running. I'm pushing on the gas and I'm going down the road, but I don't understand how the whole thing works. Psychosoma engineering um, is basically using your mind and your body together. Um, and along with, you know, you hear the word spirit, right? But it's not like the Holy Spirit or go team, go. It's not that. It's energy. It's the ether and the energy uh, that you put out there. And I'll be honest with you, 10 years ago, I'd have been like, eh, I'm gonna have to throw a BS flag on that. I mm -hmm. really didn't buy into it. But now after talking with Dale and applying this stuff, I can personally tell you it is 100% real. I have seen it in my life. I've seen what it's done for me physically, emotionally, financially, um, in all aspects of my life. So it's not just the mind and the body. It's the mind, body, and the ether, the energy. And there's a lot to it. It, it, it. We get real, actually Dale gets into the weeds with that stuff. When we, when we coach people the first four weeks, because this is what Dale's background is in. He okay. can get real deep, deep into it, into frequencies. And like at night, for example, when I go to bed every night, I play this music that basically tunes my frequency in my body every night. And it's, it's basically, you ever heard like almost like Celtic music? It's, it's Celtic music, but in the background mm -hmm. is frequency music that's tuning my body. And I'm telling you, I wake up differently. I wake up energized. I don't have, I never have weird dreams. I sleep like a baby. Um, there's a lot to it. And people that are listening that might be shaking their head going, eh, you know, BS flag, 10 yard penalty, you're wrong. And I'm telling you you're wrong because I've been doing it and I've seen the difference it makes in my life. Okay, so um, so psychosoma is the is the mind and body uh, merging with what and, and with some with some form of energy that you can manipulate or learn to control. Is it the you know is it the is it the mind body can I mean what I'm trying to understand is you know if someone's going to join uh, tier one performance coaching and go through your your psychosoma training like what you know. You don't have to get into the weeds on it with me, but just give me a little bit of idea of what am I going to learn? All right. So for example, um, I'll, I'll give you an exact example. So the, um, the formula one racer that I was coaching, yep. he had a really bad accident one okay. time, real bad, almost died. He actually okay. showed me the video of it and he would swore that guy wouldn't have survived, but he did. Um, he had a fear of driving after that. He just couldn't get into it in the turns and all kinds of things. Is when he when he wrecked, it was in a turn and he flipped upside down and went. I mean, so as an example, um, visual imagery, mm -hmm. right? Have you ever heard that term? Yeah. All top, not all, but a lot of top sports athletes do visual imagery. Mm -hmm. They 
in their mind, they see themselves doing an activity um, before they do it. Now, we, I used to do that in special operations. I would do it on, the, on a helicopter flying in, you know, closing my eyes and seeing myself going up to the door and placing a charge and taking a sticky tape off. You're rehearsing it in your mind. That is one of the things that we talk about, especially for people that have, you know, athletic endeavors, um, using mental imagery. That's one tiny, tiny little piece that we talk about. And again, it's like a triad, you know, it's almost like the fitness triad, right? You've got um, exercise, mm -hmm. rest and recovery and nutrition, right? Mm -hmm. It's three-sided. Same with psychosome engineering. Um, it's not, you're not looking at uh, yourself in a, you know, myopic way. Like a lot of people look at themselves through that. You have to look at this holistically. A huge difference, huge. It's night and day. Um, when you look at your life and what you're doing and your family and your, and your business and your health, when you look at it from a, a holistic aspect mm -hmm. and apply these things that we're telling you, it works. It, I'm telling you, I'm living proof of it, living proof of it. But that's one small example, uh, Ms. Rosenberg, is by using mental imagery. That's one little tool that we talk about. And there's a very specific way to do it. Okay. You know, we talk about self-meditation all these things that really get deep, deep into who you are as a person, you got to dive in there. You got to see, you know, you know, what is making your engine running? You know, right. you think, well, you know, you know, I got an eight cylinder car, but yeah, but only six cylinders are running. You got two more cylinders, ain't doing nothing. We're going to get both of those running and slap a supercharger on you. So we're going to get 800 horsepower out of a 600 horsepower engine. Gotcha. So I, I, so from what I understand, it psychosoma is allowing you to, you're not just focusing on the mind, yes, focusing on the body, you're aligning the mind with the body through visualization. So is this, uh, does this involve uh, what Dale talks about when he goes into something called autogenic conditioning? Yes, that is part of it. Uh, autogenic conditioning that's a part of the uh, psychosome engineering um, process. It's not right. just visualization. There's all kind of little bits yeah. and pieces. And it's kind of like connecting, um, connecting the dots. This connects to this, which connects to this, which connects to that. And once you connect them all, now you've got like a full circuit, so to speak. Gotcha. Right? But if you only know this piece and you only know this piece, you're missing that piece in the middle. What is the, so you have something called the Leaders and Legends Academy. Yeah. What is that? What is the Leaders and Legends Academy about? <laughs> so this is a program that Dale and I uh, came up with for um, mature men. Uh, not yet. We have a program for young men and we okay. have a program for, uh, you know, guys 40 and older. Okay. And it's the easiest way to put it is a, a lot of men these days have given away their, I don't want to say given away their lives, but they don't have like self-awareness and self-worth anymore. They, you know, they're focused on their business so much and their family so much and all this so much, and they haven't taken time for themselves. Okay. Okay. And, and I'm, I, I was guilty of that as anyone else, you know, everybody's busy, you know, you got your job, you got your family, you got whatever to your kids and there's only 24 hours in a day. And our program basically uh, teaches guys how to regain themselves again, regain their masculinity. Because, look, I I'm going to put it out there, and a lot of people may not like what I'm about to say, but fact of the matter is, it's the truth. A lot of men today have lost their masculinity. They've been emasculated, mm -hmm. whether it's from friends, family, whoever. Um, I've met them, and I've talked to them, and we've coached them. And it's regaining that masculinity. It's okay to be a man. You know, you talk to a lot of people today and it's amazing. It's not okay to be a real man. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Mm. It's almost insulting to some people. Yep. Absolutely. And that's not the way it's meant to be. It's just not, you know, I'm not saying a man needs to be overbearing or anything, but a man needs to be a real man. And that means take care of your family, take care of your kids, be the protector of your family, take care of yourself, all mentally, physically, emotionally, all that stuff. 
And a lot of men have completely lost touch of it. Completely. Well, you come from a alpha male, um, you know, hyper masculine environment being from uh, the special operations community, let alone um, the military. But if you're, you know, if you're going into, you know, spe specifically the Marines, special forces, uh, you, you, you are in the, the pinnacle of, of what it means uh, to be a warrior. Now, these days, I mean, look, no, no one's saying that a woman cannot be a warrior because women are warriors as well. But in a male dominated uh, environment like special operations is, you step out of that community after being steeped in it for a decade and you come back into the civilian world, you come into the corporate world and yeah, you're gonna be looked at as you know a, uh, a, a you know a caveman. You're gonna be you're gonna be looked at as you know. Hey, this guy's like a you know prehistoric, right? Uh, but it doesn't absolve you of what it means or traditionally what it meant to be a man. So you know when because I was about to ask you. So okay, so what is the definition of regaining your manhood? What what does it mean to be a man? I think you just answered that. You said take care of your family, to take care of your responsibilities, right? To protect, to protect uh, your friends and, you know, and those who are weaker than you are. I mean, those are some wonderful traits. Yes, sir. It's pretty simple. You know, we're not, Dale and I are not trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, and and I, I don't have the answer why this has happened. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, like the old saying is like, they don't make men like that anymore. Like Teddy Roosevelt, right? Mm -hmm. One of my heroes of all time. They don't make men like that no more, right? Rough Rider, Sam Juan Hill, he was a man's man. Mm -hmm. um, it, somewhere along the way in the progression of our society, um, I don't know where it happened, but men be, just got emasculated somewhere. And it just became uh, unsexy to be a real man. Now, and, I'm, and again, I'm, I don't want people to take what I'm saying as I'm being, you know, uh, pro male, whatever the case may be. I'm just saying a man has to be a confident man. He has to be a protector of his family. He has to be, you know, the provider for his family. He needs to be fit. He needs to be mentally strong. He needs to be that pillar for his family, for his friends, you know? And it seems like a lot of guys that we, they just, they just lost it. Mm -hmm. It's like, where did you lose this? And they don't even know. So, so this Leaders and Legends Academy is about. It, it's kind of. It sounds like it's a. It's a reset for for yes. for, for men, uh, older men, mature men that have kind of you know lost that that vim and that vigor and that passion yes. uh, for what it means you know to be a man in the world, going out there and making your way. Is that is that about right? Yes, sir. That, that's a very good definition. And, you know, the, the one thing that Dale and I say this all the time, look, especially in the business world, right? Most of our clients, most are, are business people. Mm. They're, they're, they, they either own businesses or they're executives or they've, you know, they've got a, a pretty decent position in life. And we tell this to them all the time. The world is so competitive. Everything is measured in seconds and inches now minuscule things make the difference. And that's what we tell them. If we can give you a 1% advantage, 1%, that could be that second or inch that you needed to go to the next level. And it doesn't matter if you're in the boardroom or the battlefield, one second, one, I can tell you like what I used to do, everything was measured in seconds and inches, <laughs> you know, like you're on a target for so long, you know, shooting, you know, everything was measured. It was, everything was quantifiable. And that's what Dale and I try to coach people is, you know, be accountable. That's a biggie. That word is the biggest, be accountable, you know, and it, when you have someone like myself or Dale holding you accountable, it's different than having your wife or your kids, right? Because mm -hmm. you, you read about us and you're like, you know, these guys kind of done a lot of stuff and they're holding my butt to the fire. And it, and it works when you have somebody else holding you accountable because, you know, I'll pick up my phone. We actually use a program um, 
this, it basically turns her phone into a walkie talkie. And um, I can literally beep one of my clients and say, Hey, you at the gym right now? Hey, did you go to the gym right now? Hey, are you eating right? Like, and it goes right to their phone. And that's part of the program. Okay. We are constantly on these people like, Hey, are you doing your homework? I better right. have it by tomorrow. That kind of stuff. Accountability is huge, huge. So, uh, all right. So, you know, I can imagine, uh, again, well, I mean, look, there's, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of guys out there, uh, you know, especially executives that, you know, have kind of, you know, lost, lost that, that zest, lost that edge, kind of lost their way uh, for whatever the reason may be, as you call it, they've lost their masculinity, right? What it means uh, to, you know, to be a man as you've defined it. And, you know, they just don't, they just, they just don't have that uh, mo. They don't have their mojo anymore. Exactly. So I could see those guys, um, you know, 40, 50, 60 years old. I, it doesn't matter if you're a billionaire or not, right? right. The reality is, you know, you might be lacking psychologically, you might be lacking physically, fitness wise, confidence wise, and, and not confidence in business. In business, you could be an animal, but you might come out of the business world and maybe you've lost your confidence uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, attracting the opposite sex. Uh, maybe it comes, uh, maybe you've lost your confidence when it comes to personal relationships. Maybe you've lost your confidence in being able to be uh, having a relationship with, you know, with your kids. They don't, they don't respect you. They don't look up to you. They don't admire you. Uh, you know, what, whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, and I could see them kind of saying, well, wait a second. I, you know, I've got Joe Tetai. Look at this guy. You know, he's got muscles coming out of his, you know, out of his neck. He's a former, uh, uh, you know, Marine special forces guy, dual survivor, uh, you know, he's got the warrior's mindset. He's talking about surviving the end of the world if necessary. We got Dale Comstock, uh, Dale Comstock ex Delta Force, uh, all American badass. Holy shit! If anyone could whip me into mental shape, into physical shape, it's these guys. I mean, hell, Dale was, um, uh, you know, he's a former MMA fighter, former professional boxer, former bodybuilder. Yep. Uh, you know, so obviously you two are lifting. You know, you got you guys must be lifting together. Um, but, um, so I could see why someone would be really attracted to the idea of instead of going with the typical, uh, you know, motivational guru coming to guys like you, but, you know, other, other than the fact that you could be a role model for someone who truly needs, uh, you know, a confident, strong, capable individual to, to learn from. What are the actual tools and tactics um, that you can impart? For instance, you know, asymmetrical thinking. That's something that, you know, that you guys promote, that you guys talk about. What the hell is asymmetrical thinking? Right. So um, some people might have heard the term asymmetrical warfare. Yeah. Um, asymmetrical has actually several different meetings, but um, it's the simplest way of, of putting it is, is using unconventional solutions to solve conventional problems. Okay. Thinking out of the box, thinking out of the box. So, you know, for example, I, I told somebody the other day, uh, a friend of mine, you know, I, I goes to the gym with me and I said, you know, dude, you've been coming here week after week, month after month, year after year. You look the same. You haven't lost weight. You haven't put on muscle. Um, do you think you're doing something wrong? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm not trying, look, I'm not trying to be rude, but like, this is serious stuff. You know, Dale and I, we, we, uh, we call it like we see it. And, and that sometimes is, is, is hard on people, but sometimes you need to have somebody look in the mirror and take a very harsh look at themselves. I've had to do it several times in my life. Um, but to answer your question, it, it, again, it's that holistic approach. Not that my optic, like I'm going to do this and that's going to fix everything. That never works. Mm -hmm. Never, never. If you want to increase your performance in your life, that it affects your entire life, right? Not just your physical fitness, but everything. You have got to look at things 
holistically. You got to look at the whole picture. Here's another example. Um, one of the things we tell people, get the negative BS out of your life. What does that mean? Here's exactly what it means. There's bull crap in your life that you can control and some you can't. Let's just face it. So there's some things that happen. You just can't, you have no control over it and it's going to happen. But there is stress and negativity in your life that you can take control of. And I'll give you an example in my life. Um, I had uh, a friend of over 40 years, 40. Every time I talked to this guy, and this was probably over the last few years, every time I talked, and it was a few times a week, um, it, negative, 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 negative. In every conversation we had, he was complaining about something. Negative, 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 negative. And I remember one day I was at the gym working out and I just kept thinking about this stuff. It was, he was in, he got into my head. Okay. There was a point where he got into my head mm -hmm. and it was affecting my life badly, badly. So I told him one day, I said, look, love you like a brother. I've known you a long time, but bro, we've got to have positive conversations. I don't mind being a sounding board if you had a bad day. I get it. But I told him, I said, you would find a briefcase with a million dollars in it and complain that the briefcase was old. Mm. And I said, you've got to stop this. If you don't, our relationship's going to come to an end. And guess what happened? Came to an end. That's what I was going to say. One not. or the other, either he changed or it came to an end. I told him, I said, and he, and he, he said, dude, you're being a drama king. And I was like, no, I'm not being, I'm being, I'm telling, I'm being honest with you. You're affecting my life. Cause I care about you, but your, your negativity is like, it was like, I call them emotional vampires. Just, just suck in the life. You got to get that out of your life. If you want to hit optimal performance, got to, if you don't, you're never going to hit optimal performance. So unfortunately, and it broke my heart. And I got to tell you, I shed more than a few tears over it. I'm a man enough to admit I mm -hmm. lost a dear friend of over 40 years because he just couldn't stop with the negativity. And I'm going to say something who's ever listening, judge me uh, as you will, but I'm going to say it because this is serious stuff. Uh, you know, I would say this, you know, love the guy, but I love me more. Okay. All it's right. just that simple. Um, and I can tell you after that relationship dissolved, my performance went up. I was more focused. I was more energized. I wasn't thinking about negative stuff. And it just, it, it, you've got to control the negativity in your life. And everybody, anyone that's watching right now, I guarantee you every single person I know and you know and who's listening is shaking her head going, yep, I actually know someone like that. You know what? It's your choice. If you want yep. to deal with it, deal with it. Don't complain about it. Yep. I couldn't deal with it. And I'm, I'm happier. How do you, so something else that you guys are big on is stress inoculation. Uh, so, you know, how do you, how do you focus in high pressure, uh, high pressure situations? Because that's, de that's definitely part of your, your performance coaching as well. Coping skills. What's yes. that all about? That's huge. Um, and, you know, I'll be honest with you. This is something that Dale really brought to light for me. Um, and this gets into all of that autogenic conditioning, being self-aware um, and, and vis visual imagery. It gets into the whole psychological aspect mm -hmm. of performance. And, you know, as you know, stress is a killer. Um, I've had a lot of stress in my life and I've gotten rid of most of it. Um, being able to deal with stress uh, is mostly mental, but it's also physical as well. Um, so again, that's that holistic approach. You can't just think, you know what, I'm gonna stop talking to this guy and not have any more stress in my life. It doesn't work that way. There's more to it than just getting rid of it. And those are those dots that I was telling you about. Um, it's being able to 
you know, if, if I don't know how many people are listening have ever um, done uh, just basic meditation. Right. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I, I it's, it, it's huge for stress relief, all of that, dealing with stress in your life, meditating and breathing. And it's very simple. It, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to do this. It doesn't take hours. Um, and Dale and I get into that on how to meditate and how to take, you know, the stress and, and, and uh, put it in another box. So compartmentalize it so it doesn't affect your performance. And it takes time, but with practice, it's, it, it's, a, it's a done deal. Simple. Um, I want to go back to something that we, uh, we were talking about before. So uh, as a survivor, right, as, uh, as the, the, you know, as a former co-star of the show, Dual Survivor, uh, and as someone who trains in uh, survival tactics, if, if civilization was to go down, if the grid was to fail, right, if, uh, you know, if there was an EMP uh, right. and, uh, this, you know, uh, the Northeast or the Southeast or the West Coast went dark uh, and uh, civilization devolved real quick, right? I think they said it only takes, uh, you know, a couple, you know, 10 days or something like that before people turn cannibal. Uh, how many days? <laughs> Three, 72 hours. 72 hours. All right. So that doesn't. That, you know, not, not much hope for mankind without, uh, you know, without uh, civilization uh, and, and those who enforce the law. But um, if that were to happen, are you going to survive? Of course. Um, Why is that? Well, first, I'm prepared. Um, my biggest thing when it comes to survival is preparedness. I, I was never a fan of rubbing sticks together to start a fire. You know what? It's called a lighter right? It's a dollar <laughs> at a gas station, right? Stuff like that. It's sexy and it's cool to be able to start a fire by friction, mm -hmm. but I guarantee you if the crap hits the fan, Joe Ted, I ain't rubbing sticks together. <laughs> I got a lighter. Okay. That's number one, be prepared. Um, why, what, the reason I said three days, uh, Mr. Rosenberg is this, um, and you can read about this. It's very interesting psychology after about 72 hours, give or take, Mm -hmm. um, when a individual male or female is stripped of their basic fundamental needs, food, water, shelter, right? Mm -hmm. Once that's gone, they, you got about 72 hours and people are going to start losing it because it's, it, it's in your id. And a lot of people have heard that term before it's instinctual. It's at an animalistic level, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of like stripping the veneer away, like peeling an onion, so to speak. Once you peel so many levels off, it's going to start stinging, right? That's what happens. People start losing the veneer of society. I got a house. I've got, you know, I've got water and I got my phone and I got food. You take that away from people for about three days, they start losing all cognitive skills and all their thing is about, I need water. I need food. I'm going to do whatever I need to get it. And uh, it's a very scary situation. And, I, you know, we live in a crazy world. I, I mean, I talk to people all day long uh, about what could happen after this election, depending on who gets elected and all this stuff. It's China that's going on. I mean, that's a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, preparedness. I can tell you, I sleep well at night. I've got food, water, and everything else I need to survive for at least six months, at least six months. So, so, so you're right now, you're, you know, you've got yourself a little fortress. You're, you, you've got, you've got uh, preparations made so that if the crap hits the fan, what do they call that? The SHTF plan? Yes. Right. So, you, so you've got six months where you could just, where you could just hold out and, and survive just on, on your supplies. Yes, sir. I do. I have enough. And actually I have enough supply for two people. Okay. I have enough for two people. Um, and you know, it's so funny. Here's a perfect example. You know, this COVID thing, right? COVID started, you go to the grocery stores and you know, this, why were people buying toilet paper? 
You know, why were people buying toilet paper? Panic buying. They were uh, panic buying toilet paper, paper towels, water. And it was crazy. And I even have a video of it. The whole row where all the paper towels and toilet paper were missing. And right next to it was trail mix, granola bars, all you should be buying is right there, but everybody's buying. You know, it's insane. Toilet paper is not going to save you, folks. <laughs> okay? You're going to probably crap the same amount. You need food and water, right? So anyway, um, yeah, it's just, it, it, Dale and I say it all the time. You don't know what you don't know. And if you're waiting and thinking, all right, well, if, you know, the crap hits the fan, I'm just going to go buy, guess what? So it's 95% of the other people and you're not going to be able to buy it. I saw no joke. I wish I had my phone on me. Uh, when this COVID stuff started, you couldn't buy water anywhere where I live. All water was gone, mm -hmm. right? Every pallet in Walmart was gone. I pulled into a gas station one day and they had probably 30 cases of water out in front of this gas station. And I'm like, oh, wow, I'm going to buy a couple of them, right? So I go in and I say, hey, man, I want to buy a couple of cases of water. He says, oh, we just sold them all. And this guy behind me goes, what do you mean you just sold them all? He says, we have a guy coming right now in his truck and he's picking them all up. He goes, oh, no, he's not. <laughs> Those two guys got into a fist fight over bottled water yep. in the front of a gas station. Where a week prior, would have care. Here, you want a bottle of water? Have a bottle of water. But now it became solid gold real estate. Right? It's that people lose their crap. They go into that immediate panic mode. And especially if you've got a family, you know, it's like my family ain't going hungry and we're going to have water. If I got to take it from you, I'm going to. That's so, the mindset. So do, you, so do you think enough people recognize how fragile, uh, how fragile the, uh, as you call it, the thin veneer of civilization is? Do you think... Do you, do you think that uh, most people uh, are unprepared for yes. what could happen? Yes, I'd say 95%. Uh, you know, Dale and I talk about it all the time. It's sad. People have their head in the sand. This is my opinion. And, th and this is my opinion based off of what I see and people I talk to. You know, everybody's with the herd. They got their head down and they're just grazing. And they're just going to follow the herd right off a cliff. No one, not I'll say no one, the smart people are seeing what's going on. They're, they're understanding that it only takes a little bit for everything to unravel. Look at COVID. I mean, do I need to say anything else? I mean, it's, and I've got my own opinions on what COVID is and the, the, whole, the whole bit of that. That's a whole other conversation. But what I'm telling you, I've even seen it where I live, where, you know, a tornado warning a tornado warning. People, boom, they rush into Walmart and everything's gone in one day. A tornado warning. Imagine if something major happened. You can multiply that by a hundred. Now, 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 what do you got? So is that so? So can I ask? Because I know you and Dale are doing a lot of performance coaching, and uh, I completely get that. Uh, I would think there would be an equal interest in those that would want to, again, you're the, you're the former co-star of Dual Survivor, right? Big, big popular show at one time on Discovery Channel. Um, you got the background for this. Uh, so are you do, so do you also train those that want to learn how to survive in extraordinary circumstances? Yes. Yeah, so one thing I do want to tell you um, is that our coaching program is not cookie cutter. Okay. So before we even take on a client, they've got to fill out a questionnaire. Okay. In the questionnaire, we ask very specific questions. What do you want to know? Tell us about it yourself. From one to 10, what do you answer this question? One to 10, one to 10. Some people want to know this stuff. Some people like, look, I don't want to know anything about leadership. I don't want to know anything about this. I want to know this. Mm -hmm. So we customize the course based on their needs. I know a lot of these other, you know, life coaches, you know, they break out the old life coaching manual, page one, blah, 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 blah. page two, blah, blah. you know what, page two might not even apply to the person you're talking to. And you just wasted their time. So our courses are 100% customized 
to the needs of that person, 100%. And I have had people, matter of fact, several, that after Dale was done with them, they came to me for the last four weeks and I was talking to them just like I'm talking to you. And they're like, Joe, I know you probably have things you want to tell me, but here's what I want to know. I want to know about just what you were talking about. How do I protect my family? How do I protect myself and my family? You know, if we run out of food and water, you know, what, how do I, you know, what kind of weapons should I buy? What that, it goes on and on and on and on. That's what they want to know. And they, they basically come to me for that because that is my speciality. And I tell them, Hey, if that's what you want to know, it's your dollar. You know, you're paying for, for this course. If that's what you want to know. And, and, and I, we have that, we have over, Oh Lord, I think about 200 documents right now in our file on every possible subject that somebody would want to talk about. And we send them these documents after we're done talking, they get hard copies of them. But, um, but yeah, a lot of people are just not prepared. That's the sad thing. They just, again, they don't know what they don't know. You also have a, uh, you know, you also have a company called Loan Operator um, and you have um, something called Warrior Warrior's Edge, the Warrior's Edge program, I think. Uh, the Warrior's Edge training series. Right. Um, and I also see a number of videos and um, I've looked at uh, uh, some of the, the, the programs that you offer uh, in tactical shooting and in, uh, you know, and in uh, combat. Uh, shooting. So is this another area that you train in for those that are interested? Um, our performance coaching uh, program is separate from that. So we okay. never really get hands on with a person. It's all done over over Zoom and over conference calls. Um, the tactical training aspect and Dale's done a lot of it. As a matter of fact, we've got something coming up here in the near future um, that we're going to be going to Florida uh, and doing something with some people down there. Okay. But that's a separate thing that, uh, that both of us can do. Okay. And, um, but yes, you know, it, it could be anything from tactical shooting to tactical tracking to survival, you know, home security, hotel security, traveling abroad. I mean, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and that's a separate, uh, gotcha. business that we, that we, both of us actually do. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's very interesting. So uh, so you guys uh, are capable of helping people survive. At, well, the title of your book, Survive and Thrive in the Modern World, right? So, so you, can, you can teach people how to survive and thrive in, uh, in their current lives, in, in the modern age, right? But you can, you, can also, you can also teach them how to survive the end of the world. So whatever, <laughs> whatever happens, right? Um, you can teach them how to survive, but hopefully, um, we're, we're actually learning how to thrive. And I yeah. think that's, you know, that's probably what, what it is we want, what it is you want. I think you were talking to me earlier and we could wrap up with this final question because you said, you know, you're, you know, it's funny. Um, you're, you know, you're, uh, a coach that is undergoing your own program, Right. Because, you know, you got a lot of people, as you said, there's, believe me, I see it all the time. It's advertised to me constantly, life, get a life coach uh, certification, right? I, I mean, you know, that's great. But, uh, you, you know, you've, you've lived it, you've done it, and that's what you're teaching. You're just teaching what you've experienced. And, um, and, you, and you guys have some really, really interesting backgrounds and knowledge to impart. But you're going through your own program, the program that you're putting other people on. How's that working out? How's your own program working out for you? Actually, that's a really, that's a good question, sir. So, um, you know, I apply uh, what Dale and I teach, you know, uh, so to speak, we drink our own cooling because it works. Uh, and I'll give you an example, uh, fitness wise. I've always, I've always been in good shape. Uh, no doubt from my Marine Corps career to Army Special Forces and then being in the unit I was in, uh, I was always in very good shape. But the shape that I'm in now is light years ahead. Uh, light years. As a matter of fact, I am register registering for a 100 mile ultra marathon January 1st. Um, never done one. I've done tons of triathlons um, and I apply what, what I've done is I've applied what Dale and I teach to myself 
And I have seen my, I'm just talking my fitness, not my business, my finances, which have also gone up. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just talking about physical standpoint. I'm 55. Okay. I'll put it out there. I normally don't talk about my age, but I'm 55, but I'm going to tell you, and I'm not tooting my own horn. I will challenge anybody half my age to a fitness contest. I mean, I, I, I bench press 405. I run a sub 18 minute, three mile. Uh, I swim a sub uh, 45 minute, one mile. Um, you know, so I'm at, but the, and I'm not saying that because, Ooh, you know, you're in great shape. I'm the reason I'm able to do that is I'm applying the psychosoma engineering, uh, that Dale and I teach to myself every day, every day. And that is the key consistency, you know, um, if people that think, well, I'm just gonna go to the gym one day a week. Don't even bother. Don't. If that is all you are going to invest in yourself, don't even bother. Mm. Don't even bother. It's not going to work. So, but to answer your question, just, just from a physical standpoint, um, my fitness level has gone through the roof. I, to be honest with you, Mr. Roseberg, I never thought at my age, because I'm pretty beat up from, from my career. And, you know, I've got torn rotator cup injury. I got ran over by a boat, have 110 stitches in my forearm. I've had knee injuries, broke my left ankle twice. I get, I got hit by a car actually three years ago, almost killed me. Uh, I was riding my bike. So, you know, yeah, I'm beat up. I'm 55, but I'm in the best shape of my life. And who's ever listening, if you get one thing from this entire podcast, you can take this to the bank. There is no pure high than knowing you are in supreme shape, knowing that right now, after I get off the phone with you, if I jumped in a lake, I could go swim three miles. That I could go outside right now and run 10 as easy it is for you to walk to your mailbox. There is real power and I don't know what the word, it's almost like I've been reborn. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I, and I don't want to use that in a, in a, in a uh, spiritual sense, but I, my, my body and my mind, I feel like I've been reborn. I've like, I've taken myself to a place that I kind of always knew was there, but I, I didn't quite know how to get to the last few rungs. Like I climbed the ladder and there was like four left. I'm like, how in the heck do you get to there? I've figured it out. And that's psycho, the psychosome engineering that they and I teach. It works. Powerful testament. Um, you certainly don't look 55. Uh, and I, I could tell you that um, uh, just from speaking to Dale uh, as well, having him on the show, really getting to understand him, having, uh, having read your book, having read his book uh, and talking to you now, uh, obviously, I mean, you guys are both in incredible shape, uh, but you, you also have not just, I mean, you're not just physically vibrant, you're mentally vibrant, right? You're emotionally vibrant. You have, you have an energy and a confidence about you. And I think that's what attracts people. I think what people want is, you know, they want that. Everyone's looking for that energy, especially as you get older. Right. You can become as successful, uh, you know, as, as you dream. But if you don't have that, if you don't have that, that fire in the belly, if you lose that fire in the belly, man, then, it's over. And right. honestly, I couldn't think of uh, better role models or mentors than guys like you and Dale, right? That have been there, done that, been through some shit, um, you know, been in the military, been, been in special forces uh, and come out the other end, you know, done, uh, you know, you guys are uh, contractors as well, military contractors. You've been involved in uh, as entrepreneurs, you've been in business, and, you know, you've, again, it, it's, it's not just I'm great in a niche. It's that you guys have a, a, a resume that spans a wide spectrum of things that you've accomplished. So for anyone that's out there, for anyone that's interested in reinvigorating, uh, in reinvigorating and reigniting that fire, that passion, you know, that, that confidence, I implore them to get in touch with uh, you, Joe, and with Dale, and it's tier one performance coaching. If, if you want to, I know you got to go. You've been very generous with your time. Um, if you want to let our audience know, where can they find you and Dale to learn more 
about your programs, about your mentoring and your coaching? Yes, sir. Uh, very easily just go to our website, tier one, and spell it out, T-I-E-R one, performancecoaching.com. Um, all of our contact information is on there. Um, I will tell you this, I'm actually in the process right now of starting my own supplement line. And it is, um, we are actually starting off with supplements for the 45 year old and older. Wow. Um, because there's nothing out there right now, really nothing that I found uh, that's worth anything um, that basically targets 45 year old and above, because let's face it, the supplements I take now are not the ones I took when I was 25. Right. You know, I need more magnesium. I need more B12. I need more fish. So I am in the process of working with a company um, to develop supplements specifically engineered for the 45 year old and older. And it's not just for men, it's for men and women. Okay. Uh, and that should be coming out probably sometime in uh, February. So that's another project I'm involved in. I'm super excited about it. And uh, I will be drinking my own Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> you will so, be. Literally. So, um, but yeah, and that we'll have our website up uh, at that point in time. And, um, but uh, there'll be a link on the tier one performance coaching site as well. But yeah, just go to tier one performance coaching.com contact phone numbers on there, emails on there. Uh, we're really good getting back to people. We'll get back to you within 24 hours and, um, okay. and that'll be it. Fantastic. Well, I'll tell you what, Joe, it's been an absolute pleasure Thank to you, have sir. you on the, uh, the podcast. Uh, real interesting uh, conversation, and I wish you huge success out there. And uh, let's stay in touch, my man. Yes, sir. Thanks, Mr. Rosenberg, for your time and the opportunity to talk with you. Uh, it's, it's been an honor. Absolutely, man. Great having you on the show. Thank you, sir.